Dennis Prager here. Thanks for listening to the Daily Dennis Prager Podcast. To hear the entire three hours of my radio show, commercial-free, every single day, become a member of PragerTopia. You'll also get access to 15 years' worth of archives, as well as the daily show prep. Subscribe at PragerTopia.com. Hey everybody, Dennis Prager here, but not exactly here. I'm actually on a plane to Alaska to give some speeches. So sitting in for me is a dear friend of many decades. And he's in talk radio about as long as I am. So you'll enjoy Mark Eisler. Take it away, Mark. Did he really say decades? Do you know that makes me feel to start with? Sean, you're not even a few decades old, right? Something like that. It's Mark Eisler back with you again, filling in for Dennis Prager. I was wondering, was he going to give me an intro? Did I have to react to it? Did I say 14 years of doing this? Can you think of a better part-time job? In my opinion, there were two unique people at radio. Rush Limbaugh, who could never be replaced with his entertainment and his political insight, and Dennis Prager, who can also never be replaced with his unique and profound view on all the ultimate issues in life. So I never try, and I just give you my take on the issues, which I've been lucky enough to do. You know, Sean, it's going to be, speaking of decades, two decades next year. And so I heard you're making me a big celebration, big party, right? You ought to see the way he said, yeah. (laughs) He said he's got a pinata. Oh, okay. That's terrific. And for all those years, I've had the same email address, markeisler at AOL.com, M-A-R-K-I-S-L-E-R at AOL.com. It's gotten me in trouble, but only Sean, I think, knows why and how. But that's how you get in touch with me. Or on Facebook at Mark Eisler. That has created its own problems, as I say. And Facebook, you know, someday we hope to replace Facebook, too. Isn't uh, that's part of the left-wing media, which, uh, what's his name, Elon Musk may be purchasing Twitter right now. He's having some second thoughts because of some uh, fake accounts. What was the estimate? Do we know? 50%? No, it can't be 50. 20% fake on Twitter? What did, what was the estimate? I, I don't remember exactly what it was, but then it's not worth what he was about to pay for it. And speaking of value and worth, I want to talk about government in this hour and what it is supposed to mean in this republic. And I want to quote the Declaration of Independence because I think this is the first time since before our independence that we must seriously wonder if we are getting the government we deserve. You heard me quote President Reagan last time. And it's what our government has surely become. What was it? The nine most terrifying words in the English language. Actually, even liberals laugh at this when I tell them that. I'm from the government, and I'm here to help. Right? We all, uh-oh. Yeah, I got an IRS notice this week. That was, you know, made me, uh-oh. What, what are they, it wasn't me, Sean. It was someone in my family. That doesn't make it easier for me because I'm the one that will have to deal with it. We started our country with the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution, And it is time to look at it for meaning again now. And all of our students, I'm a teacher too, part-time, as you know, should have it as required reading. And here's how it starts. When in the course of human events, it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another and to assume among the powers of the earth the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and of nature's God, notice nature's God, entitle them, A decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the causes which impel them to the separation. You know this one very well. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that to secure these rights Governments are instituted among men, watch this one, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. That whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, and I think a lot of you would agree that's what's going on now, it is the right of the people to alter or abolish it. That's pretty important. And and to institute new government, laying its foundation on such principles and organizing its powers 
in such form as to them shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. Prudence, indeed, will dictate that governments long established should not be changed for light and transient causes. I, I accept that, and that's important to know. And accordingly, all experience hath shown that mankind are more disposed to suffer while evils are sufferable than to right themselves by abolishing the forms to which they are accustomed. Yep, makes me think of the, the Soviet Union. Right? It didn't matter what happened. The, the, when Stalin died, they still cried. They, they were so accustomed to his rule. I continue. But when a long train of abuses and usurpations pursuing invariably the same object evinces a design to reduce them under absolute despotism, it is their right, it is their duty to throw off such government and to provide new guards for their future security. And then the last, you know, they start to list the king's tyrannies, and here's how they finished, which is also very famous. And I think Bill Bennett wrote a, a book about uh, our sacred honor. And for the support of this declaration, with a firm reliance on the protection of the divine providence. Yeah, they li- believed in God, of course. We mutually pledged to each other our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. What brave and brilliant men these founders were. So why did I quote this from our Declaration of Independence? Because I see some of the same kind of tyranny from the king in those days happening with our government now. I'm not suggesting that tomorrow we form a new country, although we may be doing that naturally, the way the states are, which they're supposed to be, to be different and experimental in what they did, different from other states. And as you know, Dennis has suggested that right now we're going through a civil war, hopefully peacefully, but a civil war nonetheless. But I am suggesting that our federal government is acting in many ways like the tyrants of old. And we need to take our government back from those who would undo the incredible country what that was created by the Declaration of Independence and our unique Constitution. Tell me what you think at 1A Prager 776. I'm going to list now just some of the usurpations that have occurred in our time. The stealing of the election from Donald J. Trump. I read, I don't know how many months ago, it had to be right after the election, over 20 anomalies on Dennis's show, I read this, that had to occur for President Trump to lose. And I remember 3 a.m., like a lot of people wrote to me, on election morning, I went to sleep thinking, this is pretty good. President Trump is going to win. This has to happen. I remember thinking in Wisconsin, and this has to happen in Michigan, and this has to happen in Pennsylvania. He's got this down, unless, I think I thought of this, unless they do something, unless they play around. I thought of that that very night. The, elect, the excellent documentary, 2,000 Mules, confirms what I was confident had happened. And to cement their Pyrrhic victory, what do they do? These thieves use January 6th to arrest and even put, can you believe in this country, put people in solitary confinement, those who asked for a redress of grievances, which is how we start this country with the Declaration of Independence and an address of grievances. They did this, by the way, those in power, to serve as a warning to others who might object to their takeover of power. They have opened our borders wide to allow those who do not share our values, I'm starting to list my thoughts about usurpation, to come in and help destroy America and its values. Not to mention, could be would-be terrorists, criminals, who will threaten our citizens directly. They have allowed, you know this, they have allowed crime to go unchecked and criminals to go free, right, with the DAs they have, to terrorize our communities and cities. With the election of these DAs by George Soros and other haters of America, they seem to care more about criminals than they do about the average citizens. They have allowed, you know this well, so-called government agencies like the CDC and local government health bureaucracies to decide what we can do with our person and whether we can attend public institutions, such as houses of worship. By the way, religion has always been a threat to those who want unlimited power. So that's the first thing they tried to discourage, and certainly at every turn. They eliminated our First Amendment rights of freedom of speech and want to do the same with our Second Amendment in the name of being woke. They have created a deep swarm of bureaucrats, swamp of bureaucrats, as President Trump said, who want to control our lives in their image. Need I mention the Department of Justice 
and the FBI, which we used to treasure, no more. And now they even want to create a disinformation board to monitor speech eerily similar to George Orwell's 1984, if you ever read that book. I bet you our students don't read it anymore. He may have been a few decades early, before his time, but it has arrived. So once again, the American people need to rise up and take back our country. And after the break, I'll tell you, it includes some of our own. You know, they're involved in this too, right? Where there's power, there's people on all sides. Let me know what you think at 18 Prager 776. I'm Mark Eisler, filling in for my dear friend of decades, he said, Dennis Prager. The Dennis Prager Show. Many people own coins that have not performed as well as they'd expected. Some own coins that have done better than they expected. Or maybe you just want to cash out and do something else with the money. Markets change, and to understand the current value of your precious metals portfolio, you should get a new valuation. So I'd like to tell you about my friend, and he is, otherwise I never use that term, Nick Rovich. Came my friend because I so admire his honesty and integrity and knowledge of the coin world, of the gold world, the silver world. He's owner of Amfed. Coin and Bullion for over 40 years. Nick has built a reputation for trust and honesty, and his goal is to earn your business for life. Nick won't push you to sell, but when you're ready, I believe he offers the best price, trade, and consignment deals compared to anyone. Right now, Nick and the AmFed team are offering their exclusive coin performance review for free. That's right, free, with a no pressure guarantee from Nick. Call Nick at 800 221 7694. That's 800 221 7694. Six ninety four. Whenever I'm down, I call on you, my friend. A helping hand you lend in my time of need. Whenever I'm down, I call and on you. And we'll get to your calls friend. in a minute. I just want to uh, finish some thoughts I said I might have. Um, so our own. Yeah, <laughs> we're in trouble. We're the party. What is Dennis called? The stupid party, right? You know, we have that problem. So we may have to get rid of some of our own who are part of this swamp in Washington, like uh, Mitch McConnell. My God, no love for that guy. Kevin McCarthy, and not enough people say that. I know him. I've met with that guy in the past. I don't trust him. Liz Cheney, need I say more. Mitt Romney, I still regret that I was a delegate for that guy. And countless other politicians who care more about their own power and wealth than the American people they were called upon to serve. And if all of our efforts fail, maybe we need a new United States of America. Not by an armed revolution, I'm not suggesting that, but perhaps a new emancipation of those states that understand that this country was founded on limited government and a belief that we get, this is a big one, we get our rights from God and not from the government. That what the state can give you, the state can take away. Boy, is that important. And that is what the left is intent on doing in this country, creating as much chaos and mayhem so that they can take control, taking away our rights and our liberties along the way. What are they going to create? Just another tyrannical state where the rulers control the people, I'm sorry to say this, who are too dumb to know what they have lost or are giving away. Do we need a nonviolent revolution? Do we need once again to pledge our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor? Are we losing our birthright of liberty and freedom? I wonder what the founders would say. It is, it is, I wonder, is it as dire as I am portraying it? Let me know. Will we really have honest elections to come? I bet you're all worried about that in November. So we can change peacefully, peacefully in November and beyond. Will the left ever give up power peacefully is there still time let me know what you think at 1a prager 776 and as you know i go to your calls when i can so let's uh uh, we lost uh i think he wanted to include um, oh it is matthew let's see uh no it's a different matthew anyway matt that hung up i wanted to mention because that was a good one he said that uh we also need something about what uh, domestic violence would be right because that's becoming an issue or what you, you know i know where he was going with that sean let's go to uh, vincent in atlanta georgia hey mark good morning vincent yes man thank you man what you said has needed to be said for a long time i saw the 2000 mules movie it is disgusting and republicans out there i love you but we need to face the reality 
what happened November 2020, we, we passed for it. We're talking about treason. And as you said, we're not Democrats. We're not violent. But we are half this country. We the people run this country. We could all simply just stop going to work. Airplane pilots, truck drivers. Everyone except maybe police and health care. We could shut this country down and simply demand this administration leave office. I know it takes courage and resolve, but it's doable. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I was very careful in my choice of words because, you know, I, I certainly don't want to suggest a violent overthrow as we had after the declaration, obviously. They were hoping, the colonists were hoping that the, the king would give in to their demands. Uh, I, you know, it's hard for me to call Joe Biden a king because we're not sure if he even has all his faculties there. And I say that with kindness. And I think it's a disaster that I was going to say this later, a disaster that his wife didn't do anything, but maybe she wants the power too. I mean, it's undignified to watch him in action. So he's he's not acting like the king was, but they wanted the grievances redressed also. And that's what we're asking for. That's why it's, it's, it's gotten kind of desperate. When you lock up people and put them in solitary confinement for protesting, look, the, who are these guys, bumbling people at the Capitol? Did they have lots of weapons? I think the only weapons found ever were by the police. Uh, then, of course, they made up all kinds of stories about what happened on January 6th that uh, several, a number of people were killed. No, they weren't. One had a heart attack or a stroke or something, you know, some of the security guards. And you put these people in solitary confinement. That sure sounds to me like Russia or the old so- Soviet Union. What, what is that all about when we can't protest and we can't have free speech? It's pretty scary, but would I go – for a violent overthrow, certainly not now, and uh, that's not what I'm advocating. But there are ways, and that's one of the beauties of the founders. They were remarkable people because they they allowed the states to be different and make their own laws. And that's I, – I wonder why anybody – I know why I stay and Sean stays. I guess we have friends here and we have work here and we have family here in states like California. Because, and, and by the way, I read this uh, – thanks for your call, Vincent. I read this blog – which is called Leaving California. I'm not trying to give it publicity. It's pretty discouraging. But you're, you're watching all these people leave. They vote with their feet. That's actually good, right? They go to states where that are more compatible with their views and they have more freedom. So that was great by the founders. So maybe we don't, when I say a new United States of America, maybe it'll be based on states that are so different than the other states. California was a paradise when I came out here. I, I can't believe what's happened to the state. By the way, that's why we lose so many elections. We Republicans can't win. They've left. I think my uh, friend who I've had on the air in the past, the chairman of the, the party at one time, uh, Sean Steele, said over a million people in just a number of years. And that was years ago. They've left. So, of course, we can't, we can't win elections here. Let's see. Is that the same Matt we lost? Yeah, Sean got him back. Go ahead. Uh, Matt in Louisville, Kentucky. Good morning. Hi, Matt. Michigan. In, yeah, I'm, you're in Michigan. Yeah, Michigan. Ah, they. Yeah. Uh, you know the problem. We have two mats right now, so we put on. Uh, that was hard. Okay, go for it, Matt in Michigan. Well, I agree with everything you've been saying. It's incredible what you you got this thing figured out. Uh, the Declaration of Independence matches. I wrote a book on this. Matches Darwin, and when you flip both those codes upside down, you get all the evil. And the Democratic Party flips those codes upside down for power of the group of the inalienable rights of the individual. Hold, hold it for a second. I'll let you finish your thought. We're going to hit the break. 1-8 Prager 776. Let me know what you think. Mark Eisler for Dennis Prager. The Dennis Prager Show. Towels just don't seem to dry you anymore. They feel soft and lotiony in the store, but you get them home and they don't absorb. Well, Mike Lindell at My Pillow found that out around 2006 and towels changed forever. He found the best towel company right here in the USA. They have proprietary technology to create towels that feel soft but actually work. And that happens to be true. I use them. They are all made with USA cotton, and they come with the MyPillow 60-day money-back guarantee. Six-piece set, two bath, two hand towels, two washcloths. Regularly $109.99, now $39.99. Just go to MyPillow.com and click on the new radio listener specials and get deep discounts on all MyPillow products, including the towels, by entering the promo code 
Prager or call 800-761-6302 for these great radio specials. MyPillow.com, promo code Prager. Thank you, Dennis. And it's uh, always a privilege. It never gets old and it's never unappreciated. Dennis is unique and there's no one else who I'd rather fill in for. Many years ago, actually, this is how it started. Many years ago, Dennis said to me, you know, those are pretty big shoes for you to fill in for me, meaning his size. What is that, Sean, a size 12, a size 13? What does Dennis wear? I don't even know. But he didn't mean his shoes were so big, right? He meant just, well, maybe he did because he told me his shoe size. I thought 12 or 13. I may be totally wrong. We've got to find that out. But big shoes they are because no one in the media is quite like him including offering the insight he does on so many issues. So I, I just try to give you my perspective on life and issues. And maybe one of these days, my own podcast, you know, with all the teaching and everything else I do, it's been hard to get it going, but we will at some point. In this first hour, I talked about whether we need a new declaration of independence to take back our country from the left. In this hour, I want to talk about the specific charges against the king, because I said, right, the founders revolted, rebelled against the king of England. As they seek to control our lives and make us into their left-wing utopia. That's what they're doing. But if you, this is important. If you understand their ultimate goal, their specific policy disasters make more sense. You think they failed because they don't work. But they think they succeeded because they've created chaos and disorder. Just as with the policies of the king of England so many years ago. But, of course, Joe Biden is no king. He doesn't have a set of principles, and he never did. Actually, he has one set of principle. That's the grow his principle, if you don't mind the pun. He might be the most corrupt president we've ever had. In any case, he's he's actually more of a placeholder for the left than anything else. And Kamala Harris, my God, is she over her head? She must have always wanted power to make up for her insecurities, of which there must be many. That's my guess. I'm no psychologist. And you... Sean, do you remember the Peter Principle? I should, uh, he's looking at me qu- funny. He usually doesn't look that way at me. Quiz, <laughs> a quizzical look. It was the Peter Principle said that you're doing your job well and then they promote you to the higher job and that's where you fail because you were very good at what you did before, but you're not so good in the promoted role. In my other field as a teacher, you wouldn't believe how many bad assistant principals and principals there are. They might have been very good teachers. That's kind of what the Peter Principle was. But she was an awful senator, if you remember that, and an awful attorney general before that. I think Dennis even debated her once. But yes, you know what she was? A good friend of former Speaker of the California Assembly, Willie Brown. Actually, I don't know if she was a good friend of Willie Brown. You'd have to ask Willie Brown, right? We don't even know if she was. Sean, why are your eyes going like cross-eyed? You're not saying anything. Neither am I. But we never check with Willie Brown about that. It's hard to believe, though, that these are the highest office holders in our country. They're an embarrassment to our country. But again, they're clearly being controlled by the left. Whether it's Obama, that's my guess, his people, or other leftists. Do you remember the event weeks ago where Obama came back, I guess, for the first time to visit the White House? And he comes back, and everybody's around him, and he's up, Mr. Terrific. And Joe Biden wandered around looking for someone to say hello to him, just to say hello. Now, that was pathetic to watch. I almost felt sorry for him, as bad as he is, as corrupt as he is. But, of course, you have to ask this question. Why does Biden's wife, and I kind of hinted at it in the first hour, she must be so obsessed with power to have ever cared about protecting her husband's dignity. What about his dignity? You can say, well, if you're mean, you say he never had any But in fact, that defines all of them seeking power, to make up for their shortcomings as people. That's what I guess. They seek power to define themselves, especially power over other people. That's my best guess. Let me know what you think, 1A Prager 776. And it includes people on our side, too, like Mitt Romney. If I had a guess, if you remember, his father didn't do well running for president. I forgot the incident that happened. I'm not going to say he cried or something. That, That would have been... That was Mike Dukakis, I think, of Massachusetts. But there was something, and all of a sudden he failed uh, miserably in his quest for the presidency. So my guess is Mitt Romney is avenging for his father's undignified loss of the presidency. But 
you know, I've apologized many times for being a delegate for him. He, he fooled me too for a while. But Dennis has said he, he met with him and he, he didn't care about principles. Yeah, that makes sense. And Liz Cheney, oh my God, trying to preserve, I guess, her father's legacy, whatever that was. If anything, she's tarnished what, with many of her pronouncements, she's tarnished what people thought about her dad, Dick Cheney. I suspect that all of these people have deep personal problems, and I never feel that they care what is best first for our country, that they care best first what's best for them. But they are part of the leftist cabal, whether they know it or not. What did the Russians call them? Useful idiots. So back to the charges. We had charges against the king, and I mentioned in the first hour that's what the Declaration of Independence was about. So what are our charges begin with against this uh, would-be president? The stealing of the presidency. They never accepted Trump's victory, and they were willing to stop at nothing to make sure he lost, including, as you know, the Russian hoax, what, two years, impeachments, and the banning from social media. And now they have lawsuits against him and other enemies, anybody who had anything to do with them. These people have no moral guardrails except to win at all costs. That's it. And as I said in the first hour, there are likely 20 anomalies over 20 that had to happen for Trump to lose. But they didn't win. And Joe Biden and Kamala Harris are in office because of blatant fraud. As the movie 2000 Mules demonstrates pretty well itself. So, Mr. King Biden, our first charge, you never should have been declared king because you ascended to the throne illegally. How many of you, you can call me, 1-8-Prager-776, how many of you listeners like me still cringe when they call him President Biden? I still have trouble with that. It's like calling the person who stole your house the homeowner. And to add insult to injury, the king had his Justice Department, as you know, throw innocent people into jail, summoned to solitary confinement, as I mentioned, because of January 6th. And they call it an insurrection. I love that. That was an insurrection? I don't think so. Uh, riffraff and all kinds of people maybe, but insurrection, I don't think so. Of course, your edicts at the very beginning, like ending our pipelines and drilling, the ending of drilling for fossil fuels and discouraging, you just discourage leases just the other week, I think it was. But it's part of your plan. See, that's what I said. You've got to understand what they're up to. That's their plan to destroy capitalism and markets that we're working here. To this day, even in light of high guy, uh, gas prices, you continue this policy as part of the Green New Deal, and that's going to help destroy our country. So what do they do? They printed a lot of money to assuage the peasants, you know, doing my analogy with the king, with your trillions of dollars in giveaways. It's a way to make them more dependent on your government. When you make people give them money, then they start to depend on the government. makes me think of a story when I first started teaching. I think it was a fourth grade kid. He's running around the school building wildly. He wasn't my student. And I finally caught up to him. I said, well, this is, you know, what are you going to do with yourself? What are you going to do with your life? In fourth grade, he said to me, I'll go on welfare. His family must have been on welfare. He already knew that term. That's, that was his dream, I guess, or that's what he had hoped. So that's what you do with the printing of money. And as you know, with inflation out of control, it won't be long before your Marie Antoinette, Kamala Harris, says, let them eat cake. Sean, you do remember Marie Antoinette? In history, if nothing else, Dennis did not debate Marie Antoinette. You don't have to look that up. There was no debate between Dennis and Marie. Uh, but, of course, I'm confusing two different revolutions, but a revolution we have in the streets. Through your defunding of the police, your Justice Department allowing the left to riot and commit mayhem to scare, get this now, the masses into needing your protection. That's what's going on. And, of course, we know that the DAs all across this country, funded by George Soros, are letting them out. I'm, I read a story the other day. You can't, they can't get police in many cities. Who would want to be a policeman these days? You, you, you lock someone up, they're out in jail before you could even say boo. And just like Putin protesting his liberation of Nazis in the Ukraine, that was a justification, you come up with this phony white supremacy as the number one problem in our country and the reason for the crackdown of our civil liberties. I can see all these uh, juxtapositions with what you're doing and with uh, communism and dictatorship, along, of course, with charges about America being a white supremacist country because you use race baiting at every chance because you have nothing else. Let me know what you think. 1-8-Prager-776-776.
Mark Eisler for Dennis Prager. The Dennis Prager Show. And I do go to your call. That's some more. Well, let me finish some thoughts up. You see, if they start to lose the minority vote, which uh, uh, somewhere in here I have 26% Hispanic vote. That's what he's getting right now, Joe Biden. That's scary to them because they can't imagine. They always counted on that. But if they start to lose the black vote, too, can, can you understand what they're doing with this white supremacy? They want to make sure they keep their base. That's very important to them. Um, and to make sure they never lose another election. That's why we had COVID. COVID was so, that's not why we had COVID in the first place. But they used it. And they're going to keep using it. I don't care how many strains come out. Strain number 27, it doesn't matter. Sean, you never heard of that strain? Number 27? Just wait. They're going to milk this for as long as they can. What is monkeypox? It is? Are you going to scare me now? Do you you have it? I was right near you. (laughs) Monkeypox. Never heard of that. Oh, my God. They're going to keep coming out with stuff. Hey, they they allow mail what? You can vote by mail weeks, months. Soon it'll be six months. And then maybe uh, a year early, not to a year later, if there's even a hint of any loss they could have. They'll do anything. Yeah, Mr. King, we have a list of complaints, and it's time to defeat you at the polls. Or, as I said, first hour, maybe form a new United States of America, peacefully, but new. And again, I'm going to get to your calls. Let me know what you think of our second Declaration of Independence at 1A Prager 776. Let me know if you think voting will do it. I'm fine. Voting does it this November. We're good to go. And you might consider this, because I do a lot. Where would you move in the new United States of America if you could live? If you live in a crazy state, Sean, where would you move? If you didn't live here, you didn't have work here, do you know one state that you would pick? Alaska. Is that because Dennis just went there and you figured you'd keep your job? Hawaii would be your second. You just want to get away. And then, Louisa, I'm not going to ask. Let me know know where you found Nirvana or at least have a same place to call home. And uh, let me know, Mark. I'm considering it. I mean, I have family in Texas, but I don't think I'm going to go there. I have some friends in Florida. It's Florida, right? Getting tons of people. Got too many New Yorkers, I think, in Florida, though. All right. Let's get to your call. Calls Dan in Hopkins, Minnesota. You're on with Mark. Hello, Mark. Great show as always. Thank you. I love how you take a lot of calls. And this is no put down of a regular talk show host, but they find that what they must say is so important. They stop for most of the time they're on the air and take very few calls in the course of a day. So I congratulate you on that. Thank Not you. That we have anything that's important either. <laughs> wait, wait. I, I want to share something with you. It might get me in trouble. That's why I don't like Sean Hannity. Uh, and I like uh, Tucker. And I, I've yeah. posted this on Facebook. Sean does not let the people talk. Uh, I mean, he no. does, but I mean, not enough. It's, it's, it, by the time he finishes his question, there's not much time for the answer. So I, that's why I don't like his show like I like Tucker. He does give his guests a chance. Wonderful. You know, um, praise the Lord. I don't want to say that Dinesh D'Souza made this film. Thank you for talking about it. Because had he not made the film, despite the fact that Rudy Giuliani, Sidney Powell, Jenna Ellis, Mike Lindell, President Donald Trump, and many others have been screaming from the rooftops for a year and a half. The election was stolen and they had the proof. I don't even think it's evidence. I think it's proof. So hats off to you. And I really wish that a more, um, I mean, I feel totally helpless. I'm a plumber, work in Minnesota by myself. And we have, it, I feel like, you know, this is a leftist term, but I feel I don't have any voice. I can't, I mean, people I tell that, you know, would tell, I, I feel so insignificant. But you guys on the radio have such an incredible podium platform to really get the, the population educated on this fact. It was the largest heist in American history, the largest crime against America. And people don't seem to be that concerned about it well D- dan thank you no, not everybody as dennis says he wishes he had a bigger audience to get his views out there and i know dennis was agnostic he's he's got more credibility than me because 
I, I didn't. He was waiting till he had much more evidence, and I didn't need that. And that's a, a negative thing about me. I could feel it. I could sense it. I watched it, and and when I read those twenty, I think it was twenty three anomalies. I said, this can't all have just happened at three a.m. and other times. And he got more votes. I don't want to go over it again now than uh, Obama did uh, in the same kind of counties. It was all incredible. It was so clearly uh, a setup, and they were never going to let Trump win again. Never. And I knew that, and I, I I was right about it. Mike in Carlsbad, uh, California, you're on with Mark. Mike in Carlsbad. Hi. Hey, can, can you hear me okay? I can, Mike. Excellent. Uh, th- thanks for taking my call. Uh, one thing that I've been listening to in the entire uh, conversation, as you as you listed these, uh, you know, some of the frail psychological issues, even though I know you're not a psychologist, but it, they're very readily apparent in people like Kamala Harris and uh, Joe Biden and the Democrat apparatus and even some in, and even some on our side, uh, on the conservative side, um, is the one thing they lack is honor. Uh, I've noticed that there has been a lack of honor for many, many years now, many decades now, uh, in people who hold power. Um, and they, when they do wrong and they know they do wrong or they say wrong and they know they say wrong, they don't do the honorable thing because power for them is uh, a, a much a much greater intoxicant uh, for control than their own self-control in terms of being able to do the right thing and saying, I've done wrong, I will learn from my mistake, or I've done such wrong that I will leave the office that I hold. Now, founding fathers, while they extolled that particular virtue in their documents, in the, in, in the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence. The problem is they really didn't, and I hate saying this, they really didn't codify it in terms of saying, you know, we, we, are, we are public servants, and when we're done, we're done. But yet when they... Gr- when they uh, Mike, when gr- they, great point. We're hitting that break, though. We've got to go. You said it very well. 1-8 Prager, seven seven six. Mark Eisler for Dennis Prager. The Dennis Prager Show. Thank you, Dennis. And I got to tell you that 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 humbles me. As I said at the very beginning, uh, there are two of my heroes in radio. One was Rush Limbaugh, who started it all for everybody. There was no one like Rush. Even Dennis would say this to me. His political take was un, unmatched. Uh, you, you always wanted to hear what Rush had to say. And, of course, he, he, was, he was pretty entertaining at the same time. And the other one was always Dennis Prager. What I learned from him, uh, I once had him at an event for me when I ran, ran for political office. And I listed all the things I had learned from it. I couldn't list all the things when I think about it. There was so much over the years that I had learned. With his wisdom and his insight, he's just unique. There, there's nobody else like him on radio. And now that Rush is not around anymore, that's it. So here I am filling in for the best person on radio. What do you want out of a talk show host? And people, you guys are always nice to me and say nice things about me. But you want them, you want to learn from them. You want them to be insightful. You want it to be entertaining. You want it, the whole package to work. There's nobody like Dennis. So this never gets old, and I never take it for granted. You can reach me at markisler at com. M-A-R-K-I-S-L-E-R at AOL.com. I read them all. Or on Facebook at Mark Eisler. So in the previous hours, we've talked about our founding documents guiding us to make our own statement against the present would-be king. And I don't mean just Joe Biden, anybody around him. They're all part of the entourage of this administration. The willing idiots who make it possible for the king, like, right, Mitt Romney, Lynn Cheney, she's on that commission, the January 6th commission. Could you believe that? It's just disgusting. And his leftist followers to get away with this. And then I answered a little bit why people vote for the left in the first place. In this segment, I want to talk about what could happen if the king is left unchecked and what is already happening. On the world stage, the evil regimes recognize weaknesses right away and they exploit it. We have already seen what Russia has been emboldened to do and what China may yet do in Taiwan. And Iran and North Korea are sure to follow and already North Korea is doing it and Iran is, is always doing it. You, you create a vacuum, they see weakness, and they come in. And when you show weakness from your leaders, your enemies will be emboldened to attack. So I ask you, would they have attacked if President Trump was still in power? Would Russia? Would Putin? I don't believe it. 
I have always worried, and I've been saying this for years on the radio, about what this weakness would produce on the world stage, more so than locally, because in our own country, we can theoretically fix it. Uh, whatever happens, and we can even do that maybe this come November by electing you know, a, a new Senate in the House I think we're likely to win, although I wish it wasn't Kevin McCarthy. I wish it was uh, Jordan. He'd be my choice because I don't trust McCarthy. In case you didn't know it, McCarthy is reported to have said some things about maybe Trump should resign. I, I don't trust these people. Nikki Haley, she asked for him to resign, to, not resign at the end, but turned on him. By the way, Sean, you ever see this? You try to get rid of, unsubscribe from emails. I can't get rid of Nikki Haley. I can't get rid of her. How many times I try to unsubscribe? You turn to my president. I don't want to hear from you anymore. You don't get to do that. You, you, you know, but I can't, you know, I, I won't tell you. There's some people you know that I can say in radio. I try to unsubscribe. They don't tell you. You push the unsubscribe button and they don't, they keep coming back. They're like Hillary Clinton. I can't get rid of them. <laughs> anyway, it, if Putin gets desperate enough, seriously, to release a nuclear weapon, then all bets are off. And you don't have to worry about what may go on in our own country. It might then be too late. Also, I'm worried about the absolutely corrupt, incompetent people we have in power, now one of whom has clearly lost his mental capacity, and our opponents know this, and they're using it against us. And I'm, I'm not sure there's ever been a worse duo, that'd be the question for historical buffs, than Biden and Harris. In, in, I mean, the incompetence, the, uh, they, they just have no clue. How many of you out there count the days until they're gone? And... Uh, at least in November, maybe that power will be checked. If I was cynical enough and I thought Joe Biden could think clearly, I would suggest that he chose Kamala Harris as an insurance policy to make sure he was never removed by the 25th Amendment. Cynical, huh? But that's what has occurred. How can you ever wish to have him be replaced by her or the next in line after that? I don't think we have ever been in a more precarious position. But even if we survive foreign threats from our international enemies, things could really get bad in our own country. So we have inflation, we have unchecked crime, and we're starting to see food shortages. Sean, have you seen that? I know you go to delis and stuff like that, but on my oh, on the shelves, well, not just baby formula, right? I'm seeing certain places have food not there. I never saw this before. As I said, baby formula is unbelievable. So let's look at our guardrails there. If people have good values, they don't commit crimes. I accept that. Dennis has always said it. I believe it. And I remember, not many people say this, I said it during the L.A. riots, they claimed that the people rioted in Los Angeles because they didn't have money, because poverty, they said, causes crime. So I always asked, I didn't hear anybody say this, if poverty causes crime, why didn't the other a million people in Los Angeles also riot who didn't have money? And, of course, the answer was they had good values. But do enough people still have those good values? In fact, it doesn't take many people to destroy a society. If people without good values start to steal in greater numbers, the whole society is, is ruined. We're, we're in for it. You remember the broken windows theory, Sean? You don't have a clip on that, but do you, you do remember that. Okay. It states that any visible signs of crime and civil disorder, such as broken windows, vandalism, loitering, public drinking, Transportation fare evasion, which we have here in L.A. and New York, create an urban environment that promotes even more crime and disorder. Sound familiar? You've heard about gangs or individuals stealing from stores, items. Sean, you know the amount in California? How much can you get away with? And it's a misdemeanor and not a felony. He's so good. It's $950. That's just what he said. But you know what I thought? With inflation, they'll probably raise it to 1000 or 1100 right? They should be able to be accountable. Well, you've got to account for inflation. And as, well, that's what, that's what you do on the weekends? A side job. They, gotta, they don't pay you enough, so you have a side job, right? Makes sense. No, you're probably the one who, I heard stacks of meat one time from Trader Joe's. Uh, someone just walks, people just walk out now. Uh, it's crazy, and it's a misdemeanor. So they have gangs of kids stealing in San Francisco, I mean, and all over. And there are other cities across the country with similar laws. Not to mention, of course, prosecutors, not prosecuted criminals in the first place, thanks to George Soros-elected DAs. 
So we see gangs of, as I said, uh, across California stealing from Walgreens, individuals. Hey, I went into Walgreens, uh, Walmart the other day to buy, what's that? I always mess, Icy Hot. You ever hear of Icy Hot medicine? For my knees, from all the basketball and tennis. I still play tennis all these years. For my knee information, it was locked up. They're locking up everything. This, this, I heard that they're going to lock up meat. What, what do you think happened? Watch this one. I walk into Ralph's. I'm trying to get some produce. You know the little bags? that they, you put the produce in, tomatoes, the lettuce. You know, they give you little bags. There were no bags. So I said, yeah, I said, Sean's giving me a look. So I said to the produce lady, where are the bags? She said, they steal them. I said, why would they steal the bags? I, she said, I don't know. They take them home. So I don't know what those bags are good for. Well, you, you think, you know, part of this, I'm kidding? I'm not kidding. I'm worried. I'm worried about what's going to happen. And where I lived when I first moved in, they told me they hadn't had a burglar in 40 years. Now, do you know what they steal besides breaking glass in the car windows? Do you know this one, Sean? What do they steal? What's big from cars? He doesn't know. I got him. He had all those clips. I, he says, I got him. I can't believe I got him. At least it's before the show ended. He just got it. All right, who told you? Who told you? Someone told you, right? Admit it. He got it. Catalytic converters. I didn't even know we had them on cars. But you know what? I'm lucky, Sean. I have three old cars. Well, they, I guess they could take it from an old car, too. But that's why I drive old cars. I can actually afford a new car. I drive around in old cars. If they're going to steal it, I won't buy a new car because of that. Can you believe that? And that doesn't count the homeless who are becoming more and more aggressive. So I'm walking out of Ralph's the other day. You guys call it Kroger across the country. Here we call it in California, Ralph's. And this lady follows me to my car. She follows me. I'm putting in the groceries in the back seat, and she's a few inches away from me. And, I, and I, I have no idea what she was saying. She was yelling at me, and I thought, if she had a knife, she'd stab me. I mean, it's really, I, I don't want to scare people out there. When I moved to California, I was not far along. I didn't know Dennis then. About the same time, this place was a paradise. I couldn't believe it. It's no longer a paradise. If I didn't have close friends and good family living out here, I'd be long gone. We're watching the destruction of a once great society. Let me know what you think at 1A Prager 776. Mark Eisler for Dennis Prager. The Dennis Prager Show, live from the Relief Factor Pain Free Studio. Dennis Prager here. Thanks for listening to the Daily Dennis Prager Podcast. To hear the entire three hours of my radio show, commercial free every single day, become a member of Pragertopia. You'll also get access to 15 years' worth of archives, as well as the daily show prep. Subscribe at PragerTopia.com.